Okay, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to animate. Um, more specifically, how to get two cameras in the, to the animation and how to switch between the cameras and also how to make the cameras move. So do a panning shot. So first, I've got an animation where it just, the balloon simply moves up into the air. So, and I also have a camera angle. To see what's in the camera view, I hit zero on the keypad on the right side. And if it's not where I want it, I need to do a couple things. First of all, I need to open this menu right here, N on the keyboard, or this plus sign, or the little plus. And I need to make sure I lock camera to view right here. If I don't, I can zoom in and out. But if I lock it, then I can change the actual view of the camera. And that's the best way to change the view or the location of the camera and what it's showing. So make sure it's in the right spot to start with. Um, and then I can see my animation goes out of the camera view right about there. Uh, frame 50 or so. So I want to pan this camera first of all. So if I right click on the camera, when I'm in camera view, just right click on that box. And then I've got the camera selected and it brings up a new set of keyframes. I don't have those keyframes because that was the balloon showing the keyframes. So I'm going to set my start uh, my frames to one and I'm going to set a keyframe. Now one tip here is to come down here to these keys and select location rotation scale that's usually what we use in animation and now if I've got that selected right there I just hit I and it doesn't bring up the menu it just sets a keyframe for me right away of that type now it's yellow right here so I've set the keyframe and if I move to about 50 frames I'm going I want this um, I want the camera to move just a little bit to pan the view. So I'm going to just hold down shift and middle mouse click and I'm going to pan it slightly this way um, or move the camera that way. And once I've changed the position of the camera and I'm in the right frame, then I can hit I again as long as my cursor is up in the window. And that way my camera moves. It's a panning shot slightly. We don't want too much movement, but it kind of goes with the balloon. And you can do whatever panning shot you want, of course. Now that the balloon at about 50 is out of frame, I'm going to switch the camera view. Of course, I have to add a camera first, so I'm going to hit zero to go out of camera view. And then I'm going to add a camera, and it adds it wherever my cursor is. So I can place that cursor somewhere or just add it and then move it later. Um, so I'll do a shift A or come down to the add menu and select camera. So I've got two cameras now. Um, there's this little triangle above the camera and if it's dark that's the camera that's being used when I go into camera view so this one is not dark it's just hollow up above um, so let me show you where if you come over to the properties over here on your tabs and scroll over to the uh, let's see there's a couple that we want to use the scene tab it's the third one in here's a list of the cameras and I've already named one close up and this is the camera that I just added. If I select that camera, then this one goes solid, and that's the one that I'm going to be using when I go into my view, camera view. So if I do that, zero, I'm not seeing anything because it wasn't pointing at the balloon. But if I'm in this view and I've got the lock camera to view button selected, then I can change the view. That's the best way to do it. I'll just zoom out, find the balloon, and then hold down shift, middle mouse click until I get it in the view that I want. And this one, as it's rising, I'm going to place it underneath the balloon. So try and get that in position right underneath it. So once it's about 50, I'm going to switch it to that view. And I want it right there or maybe right in the middle. And then from then to the end of the animation, I just want to see it float away into the sky from underneath. So I'm on about frame 50. doesn't matter too much exactly where but that's uh, where I'll put it and at that point I want to switch to this to this camera view so I'm going to put a keyframe here well let's see um, what I need to do actually is I'm going to go out, out of camera view I'm going to select my other camera and what I want to do is mark it so that that camera is being used so let's switch the camera to close up and to name it, I can just click once right here and type, start typing, and it will name it. So this will be uh, ground shot. Okay, so I've got close up, except that's not really a close up anymore. It's more of a medium shot. 
or even long shot. Okay. Now I've got my keyframe there. I'm going to mark that with the, just an M to mark it. Oops, got to have your cursor down on the timeline. Give it a marker, M. And on that marker, if I right click on it to select it, which it's already selected, now I want to uh, bind that camera to it. So I do a control B as long as my cursor's within the keyframe. Let's see, that didn't work. Maybe I need to go into camera view and then control B. Uh, no, what's going on here? Got it selected. Oh, it did it. Um, bind camera to markers. It's just not really showing me. Okay, then when I get to frame 50 about, then I'm going to select this other camera. In fact, I need to change it here. And uh, it didn't rename it. I need to go to the box to rename it, actually. And that was going to be ground shot. And I'll rename this one just because. Long shot. I put medium shot last time. That's okay. Okay, now if I get my ground shot camera and then I, let's see if I can just select it. And I'm going to set a keyframe here for that camera. So I, and then I'm going to put a marker there, M, and it's selected, it's yellow. So I'm going to do a control B and it binds the camera to the marker. Um, and it should have bound that camera. So now as I pan through, you can see the solid triangle fills in on the first 50 frames and then it uh, fills in that camera on the first 50 frames and then it switches right there because I bound that camera to the view. And is it pointing up still? Yeah, it is. Okay, so now if I, another trick, I can pull open a new view panel by clicking the little diagonals and dragging it out and then switching the view to, uh, well, it needs to be 3D view, I guess. I just want to close these menus. And then if I hit zero, it switches to the camera view. So I can see what camera it's on. So it's the long shot first, panning, and then it goes to the ground shot for the rest of the animation. So that's how I pan a camera and switch camera views. And then I can uh, do whatever I need to. Maybe I'd make the, the sky blue so it looks a little more realistic. Um, I can go to the world tab. Mine's already blue. So when I render it, it will look blue, but I can just switch it right there. So that's uh, some tips on animation and the camera work.